Okay, okay, let's dive into this thing called PBR, physics-based rendering. And we'll do that by looking at a model that uh, came from CG Trader. It's one of the free models and it is PBR ready. You can search for those and uh, download the, uh, the file. It, it includes an OBJ, it includes a few others. Uh, the material file is here. If you open that in uh, Notepad, Notepad++, you'll see some of the content there. And sure enough, there are some materials here that indicate there is definitely some physics-based uh, description of the materials, right? There's a metallic part, there's the albedo, that's how much it reflects or shi how shiny it appears. The roughness that might be perhaps seen as bump mapping. Uh, so there's there's a couple of maps that you could have there and you could have others. Uh, I mean normally we, we expect something like the diffuse color and uh, so the, the factor, the coefficient, KD, um, is here and uh, some materials, default material here has a slightly different appearance, more like uh, grayish. It's not at full 1.0 values for red, green and blue. Um, but this one here is black, so there are some dark parts. That's the glass. Uh, we might want to give it a little bit of a bluish tint, so RGB, maybe, I don't know, 0 0.4 or something like that. Um, we could go with the wireframe, and so that's how to give it the appearance. I'm not sure exactly where that's going to be used. Um, this is just describing the materials. And the geometry file, of course, is the OBJ file, the object. What I'm thinking of doing is adding a material similar to these guys here, which is for the metallic appearance of much of the paint on the uh, aircraft body. Um, but I want to add something that I've seen earlier. There is a PDF here too, the UV map. And wouldn't it be cool if we could actually map that onto the surface in the 3D geometry. And of course we can, we can just take that into a PNG file and make it the diffuse map, the diffuse color. So I'm gonna go and see if I can open that. Uh, I probably have LibreOffice here, yep. And uh, hopefully that will give me a nice big display of a raster image. Uh, there it is, I wonder, no, it's actually got individual parts. Uh, not perfect. I'd probably prefer to have something like uh, maybe there's a PNG export here somewhere. Let's see, save as or export, export as. Uh, it's back to PDF. And uh, let's go save it as a uvmap.png. There you go. No need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I'm not sure what the dimensions will be here. Let's see in pixels because I'm really thinking pixels here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it 1024 squared. So uh, 1024 by 1024. Okay, and okay, that. The rest I'm sure will be fine. We don't need much compression. Uh, keep it like that. Okay, so we do have now almost now there it is we have the same image or similar enough this one here's the preview um this one's a little bit darker lighter um but i think if we open it we'll see oh it's got the white as transparent ah maybe we need to you know what let's open that in in dog waffle and then see if we can further refine it maybe make the white the lines a little bit wider so we see them more easily as well uh, so let's switch over to howler Okay, so here we go. So here we go, let's drop that in here. And there's our image and it's nice. It's not exactly the way I imagined, a little bit darker lines. I mean, this will work, but uh, maybe we can use this as a, how to make it darker, a wider lines, how to make these lines, which are pixels now, right? How to make them a little bit more visible, more dark, contrasty. First of all, expand the dynamic range just in case we're not fully there yet. Then go to, well, store that image too. Uh, then we go to something like threshold. Okay, so that could be a way to enhance it all. It's a little bit too much, but it's, it's a way to, to look at it. 
The other thing you can do is adjust the uh, hue saturation, the pro, uh, yeah, the value, the contrast. Right? Adjust the contrast, um, and you'll you'll find ways to make it so that they do appear a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. And then, of course, the next thing is to make them wider. And uh, one way to do that with the photographic filter, you can do the dark diffusion, not the light diffusion. You can switch it back here to dark diffusion. There you go. So the dark lines, the dark pixels are expanding. You can actually adjust how much they're expanding. Don't go too far. But when you do that, you can then adjust the threshold or the contrast again. And soon enough, you'll have uh, wider lines. So let's do adjust uh, value again and adjust the contrast and you see now you have those very fat back lines there so that's that's a trick or a technique you can do is you can expand the dark pixels into the brighter areas and then threshold it to to adjust a little bit and get it to the look you want all right so that's uh, just one little side note let's let's say we want to keep this one or let's go back to the original 